This video is brought to you by Keeps.com. Stay tuned to find out more. He's one of the big superstars of the world, Little Pimp. There he is. <laughs> Does everyone know who he is? Do uh, you know how big he is? Come on up here. If you got popping in 2017 or 2018, and by 2021 you were washed up, you were basically a one-hit one. You are a disgrace. Y'all got hooked on drugs, hooked on anything but phonics, and didn't can deliver. You are trapped. For years now, hip-hop news organizations have found themselves in the unenviable position where, rather than finding that they receive much of their traffic from detailed reporting about the music that they love, most of their revenue was generated from charting the never-ending antics of hip-hop's youth as they battle for the audience's attention, in turn giving rise to the mutation of the genre that's been labeled as clout rap. Although a concrete definition is hard to come by, so-called clout rap is defined by a few things. A, the artist's social media presence plays as much, if not more, of a role in their career as the music itself. B, they'll regularly find themselves involved in meaningless scuffles and beefs online. And C, any substance takes a back seat to constant claims that you are the top dog in the industry. In lieu of any real mission statement, the only true goal that the clout fixated rapper has is to keep stacking up enough jewelry, designer clothes, and every other status symbol they can find to make themselves undeniable. Although they predated the clout era, this concept was beta tested by early internet rappers such as Lil B before being arguably perfected by Soldier Boy. As after making his ascent in the mid 2000s, the head of SODMG, who released a track entitled Hella Clout in 2018, has made a career out of proclaiming himself to be hip hop's market leader and beefing with everyone from wrestlers to influencers along the way. All the while, throwing his hat into the ring as the biggest and most vital star in the game, resulting in an era where he may make memes, but he hasn't registered on the charts in a decade. Yo, so Meek Mill ain't beef with Chris Brown and was finna box with Floyd Mayweather. Beef with, beef with Drake, the biggest rapper in the world. <laughs> Drake? Drake? <laughs> the got bitey by Pusha T? Oh. He copied my whole flow! Oh, word for shit. word, bar for bar! Alright, so I want to take a quick break to thank our friends at Keeps.com. For anyone that's endured a battle with thinning or receding hair, you know that it could be a real uphill battle. Even if it hasn't affected you as of yet, two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. But rather than waiting for that to happen, the best way to prevent that is by getting ahead of the problem. Keep specializes in doing exactly that, safeguarding the hair that you do have, and in some cases, promoting growth within the 100,000 men that have put their faith in the product. And in most cases, results will begin to surface within just six months of the treatment getting underway. In essence, Keeps is a subscription service that makes sure your hair stays intact. Delivered to your door every three months, they provide personalized, doctor-recommended treatments at half the price of pharmaceutical plans. And while you're spared the inconvenience of heading down to their office, every treatment plan comes with round-the-clock messaging with a doctor for one year. Simply put, hair loss doesn't have to be inevitable. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com HHM or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash HHM. All right, let's get back to the video. From the emergence of Lil Uzi Vert's clout to the popularization of clout goggles, 2017 was arguably the year where clout rap reached its peak. The subject of countless tracks and hastily penned bars that looked to capitalize on the idea, the emergence of clout as a cultural obsession meant that everywhere you looked, everyone was attempting to accumulate it, either through their latest hijinks on social media, or in the case of Joyner Lucas or Florida's own Denzel Curry, rallying against it. It's Muhammad Ali when he's mouthing off, which changed boxing and made it more entertaining. It's Tupac when he was going wild on people, creating entertainment, said Nas when discussing the rise of clout in November of last year. I don't care for it when it's only that, when it's only clout, when there's no real purpose behind the record other than trying to get streams. I wish artists would try not to do so much clout chasing because the people notice it and it's corny. Although there's no doubt that some artists have modeled their careers around getting one up on others who would likely try to shrug Nasir's comments off, there does appear to be a steadily mounting case that the concept has been driven into the ground. To pinpoint a prime example of this, look no further than Lil Pump. Since busting out of the gate with Gucci Gang, Pump has used his platform as a means to profit from the prevailing trends of the day, eventually gaining so much notoriety as a comedic figure in hip hop that he even netted a Kanye West collaboration. From his provocations to J. Cole through his fake retirement and embracing the idea of being a addict, there was a period where, no matter if you liked him or loathed him, he was simply too big to be ignored. Then, he suddenly found himself scrambling to replicate his attention-grabbing style after his 2019 Harvard dropout project, saw his persona wear thin, and result in the record spawning no hit singles whatsoever. And as we saw earlier, he not only attempted to feud with Eminem, but tried to garner some clicks by restyling himself as a Trump supporter. To the mind of No Jumper's Adam22, this was a case of when clout chasing leaves you painted into a corner and just waiting on your downfall. 
it kind of feels like a lot of that might have closed the door a little bit on people's willingness to with him. Not artists necessarily, but the fans, you know? It was already crazy enough, but the fact that he called him a little pimp just blew my into a million pieces. Um, I didn't think that was a great idea. I don't think long term it was a good career move. Although it's not nearly as dramatic a decline, the infamous Takashi 69 was another beneficiary of the cloud era. Fresh from his release from jail after he turned informant and became hip hop's most wanted man, the world record breaking live stream that announced his return to the public eye may have seemed like a new high water mark, but would actually prove to be the beginning of the end. After proclaiming that he was clout on comeback single Gooba, the sales of his sophomore album Tattletales amounted to just 50,000 and the number four spot on the chart, just one third of what it was predicted that he'd shift. Just like Pump before him, curiosity dipped when his stick proved repetitive and with nothing to back it up. He could never recapture that magic. While his situation wasn't as explosive, this sense of fraudulent hood origin stories coming back to haunt an artist was embodied by Alabama's YBN Namir. Propelled to fame by tracks such as Rubbing Off the Paint, the YBN leader arrived with no shortage of lyrics about doing dirt in the streets. But when it was discovered that it was the virtual neighborhoods of San Andreas that he earned his stripes on, the jokes came thick and fast. Particularly as his identity crisis continued to rage on before his eyes. I used to be on the internet a lot, so all my friends on the internet were from California. I was always around them, online, so I started to sound like them, he told the fader in October 2017. I don't really hang around people from Alabama for real, except my cousins and them. Just one month on, he put forth a contrasting image to No Jumper. Cause I only hang with people that's like older than me. I was out there, but I was cool, like you feel me? I was smooth. I know a bunch of that didn't die, life sentences in jail, but it was really smooth. Like I ain't really had to worry about cause I know my had me and like I wouldn't f with me cause my name whole weight in my city. Now in the post clout era, YBN Namir's 2021 album Visionland shifted a measly 4,000 copies and was relentlessly clowned by fans. Possessing more of a shared ancestry with YouTube rappers than with the icons of the past, it was only a matter of time until the appeal of relentless posturing wore off. Particularly when you consider that as of May of last year, artists were looking to use their platforms for good. After the tragic murder of George Floyd re-energized the BLM movement, artists such as Lil Baby, The Baby, Roddy Rich, and Conway threw themselves into musical activism. For Lil Baby, this shift was so well received that protest anthem, The Bigger Picture, became his highest charting single, proving that the mindlessness of clout chasing isn't necessarily the key to success when actually standing up and being counted can be just as impactful. With these artists emphasizing that there's still a place for sincerity in hip hop, we've reached a point where even those who are forerunners of clout rap are now analyzing what's going on and pointing out that this is a monster that we've all helped create. Having arrived in the game with an exaggerated, drill-inspired persona in 2015, Slim Jesus was instantly vilified for his gimmick. So, when it was revealed that New York's Lil Tecca had falsified his bars about choppers and other criminality, Slim Jesus was quick to point out that this was nothing new. Having a gun don't make anyone gang. So rapping about guns don't make you want to be gangster. You just rapping about guns. Like I rap about and I have a whole girl. If you don't like what I'm talking about, go listen to someone else. When I came out, my first interview, I said, look, I ain't out here trying to kill nobody. I'm here to make my music. Y'all try to crucify my So my issue lie with y'all dumb bro that swear y'all hate my so much, bro. But I don't think y'all really know why the you don't like me in the first place, bro. Valid as his criticisms may be, Slim's suggestion that he was unfairly treated misses out on the crucial difference in time frame between himself and the 18-year-old MC behind Did It Again. As while Slim was sticking his neck out there with a falsified character in 2015, Tekka has arrived at a time when that was ultimately commonplace and caters to an audience that cares more about clout than content. However, it appears that Lil Tekka caught the tail end of an era in which this works, and now, inauthenticity is once again coming under scrutiny. During a recent live stream, DJ Academics, who released his own Clout Chaser EP at the height of the wave in 2018, claimed that clout has been abolished as the audience reestablishes an appetite for realness. The people who were swag rapping gangsterism, and by the way, I'm gonna include Smoke Perp. He used to rap about all type of guns he had. Again, the real street rappers eradicated y'all. Your raps are not believable. They don't hit the same. When they, people see Pooh Shiesty, they think he's a real shooter. When they see Namir, they think he's a GTA role player. Y'all have a little era where you shock or you amaze people. And within that time period, people care. A year later, they don't. Left to flounder after artists such as 6 9 and Lil Pump had weakened the audience's capacity to suspend their belief, it appears that more elaborate stunts are giving way to an understated air street credentials. Led by figures such as Lil Durk, Pooh Shiesty, and Polo G, this new breed of street-oriented rappers have helped audiences delineate between the real and the fake and have become the new dominant wave. And what is the perfect summary of this tipping of the scales? Look no further than June of 2020, in which Lil Pump's former ally and noted clout rapper Smoke Perp went up against Lil Durk for the audience's listenership. Within that same first week spell, Smoke Perp's Florida Jit sold 5,000, 
while the deluxe edition of Lil Durk's Just Cause Y'all Waited 2 recorded a massive 40,000. In December of that year, Durk would forfeit most of the first week's sale period for follow-up record The Voice and still clocked in over 23,000. Within the following week, he'd obtain another 66,000 before he'd help elevate Pooh Shiesty to dominance with Back in Blood, with his debut album shifting 62,000 in its first week. And with that, the power officially changed hands. No longer willing to stand by and tolerate artists whose singular selling point comes from the same sort of drama that's made reality TV into a guilty pleasure, hip hop is now searching for a reconfiguration of what and who will dominate the charts. And while it's impossible to know if this pivot towards rappers with a real aura of menace to them is the answer in the long run, fans can take comfort in the fact that for the clout rappers, their bag of tricks is officially drawing blanks and is out of sync with the audience's ever evolving sensibilities. Or as J. Cole put it on the prophetic Lil Pump response of 1985, one day them kids that's listening gonna grow up and get too old for the shit that made you blow up now your show's looking like cause they don't show up which unfortunately means the money slow up